after nearly being unsigned for four years, I finally got signed again, and I'm on T1, and it's crazy. Who would have thought Curry Shot would be on the same team as Faker? But uh, I really just wanted to go ahead and make this video because I wanted to give insight of what it's like to actually chase a career in esports and like how hard this field actually is. Um, like for example, I see Reddit posts about like, hey, you know, you need to go ahead and have a backup plan, do this and that, um, to really get into like esports. But the th the reality of it is like it takes a lot of sacrifice. So I want to give you real insight on what it's really like, um, because again, these last four years they've been the h hardest part of my life by far. And I want to go ahead and sh show you, like, why that is, right? And again, I'm not really going to, like, talk off a script or anything like that. Um, you know, it's just going to be, like, you know, off the dome, you know, straight from the heart. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry if I ramble a bit, but I just want to go ahead and, you know, get this off my chest. And as well as, you know, give you guys an update video because, you know, I'm a terrible person in terms of, like, you know, keeping my community, you know, updated on, like, what's been going on. So, yeah, um, with that being said, let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, talk about what it's been like. So... Uh, basically, um, you know, I, I joined T1, uh, I'll be head coaching their Valorant Academy team, and, you know, I was on other franchise teams unofficially, you know, helping them out, um, you know, with one of them actually being first place for a little bit, and it was really hard for me not being able to go ahead and, you know, join a team, right? Um, because when you when you put up those results, and, you, like, you're really showing, and you're really putting, like, a lot of time into something, and it's it's just not you know, rewarding you back, it feels really bad. And again, having de a decade plus of experience and then again, people not really, I guess, valuing that uh, really made me feel shitty. And, you know, it, it is what it is, but I, I do want to talk about, you know, you know, what the process is like because I did end up going back to school and, um, you know, while I was chasing it, again, I was unsigned for four years. So I went back to school, got a degree, and then after I got my degree, um, I decided to like take my own advice in the sense of like, hey, um, you know, I, I need to like really just put everything into this um, to make it work out. So what I did was, uh, and this is kind of like, I guess my secret sauce, I would not recommend it. But again, I just wanted to see like the amount of sacrifice it really takes is like, you know, I, I basically locked myself in a room from 11 o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, pretty much every single day for two months. So I stopped pretty much going out. And yeah, that's not a healthy lifestyle at all. And I wouldn't recommend it. But I joined four different teams in different Valorant circuits. So my thought process was like, okay, if I join uh, Game Changers Collegiate uh, Academy, like Challengers, and like pot potentially like franchising as well, one of these will pay off. Um, one of them will go ahead and, you know, give me like a solid offer. And surprisingly, at the time, two of those um, teams actually gave me an offer. So uh, two two of those um, paths really worked out for me and you know luckily you know ended up signing to t1 so uh, you know it was a it was definitely a huge relief for me but I, I just want you guys to know like man it, it's really hard and and like any I'm not I'm not like anyone special really really I'm not um, I'm just like any other person so you know, if if you are chasing this, just understand you you yeah, talent is like very nice to have, and if you do have it, that's that's a plus. But you know, you, you gotta just like work really really hard. And um, yeah, with that being said, I just want to talk about like what it was like in those four years because um, if you don't know, prior to this, I was in the Overwatch League, and I was making around two hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, so going from two hundred thousand dollars a year to pretty much zero dollars a year for the next four years was really really tough and you know I, I really want to be transparent with everyone and like what that was like because that was a really hard moment for me and I understand that for other people you know they've gone through something similar maybe at different scales sometimes making more money than that sometimes making less money th than that but you know you just have to like you just have to like push through and just like really think about what sacrifices you have to make to get to that point so again, I'm I'm not saying like, you know, I'm not lucky by any means because I'm sure there there is an element to luck on, um to it as well. Me getting the the opportunity to even try out because um to be honest like, um, I wasn't lucky. I, I wasn't getting uh tr tryouts or opportunities at the start. Um, and I even had like a huge organization give me a tryout date and then ended up canceling on me the day before. Never gave me a reason why, and yeah, that sucked. That sucked, but. Um, at the same time, uh, that was a negative and, you know, I can't really dwell on the negatives and, you know, you 
whoever's watching this should never dwell on the negatives. It's always easier to focus on, you know, I guess the negatives, but, you know, you always have to be grateful for, like, what you do have and, you know, what is being given to you. And that's something that I took for granted um, up until recently. And, uh, you know, once I realized that, it changed my mindset on a lot of things and it really let me go ahead and, and grind this out pretty much every day for, like, you know, two months. So, um, you know, that's that's something that you really have to consider. And what I mean by that is, like, I, I say, like, I, d I was, like, unlucky and I didn't get those trials, but then I, d I did become lucky. Like, I changed my mindset um, and then I got an opportunity. And I know it wasn't guaranteed. I knew I knew I had to work really hard to, like, show, like, my value and what I could bring to a team. But I did it, and I'm going to continue to do it. Like, that's the other thing. It's, like, once you get an opportunity, it's easy to, like, just relax or whatever and say, like, hey, I made it or whatever. But, um, you know, that opportunity, and, uh, you know, you can learn from me. Learn from me. I was an, an esports coach for a decade plus, man, in uh, LCS, Overwatch League, um, you name it, at the highest of the high. And at any point, that can go away. So you have to, you have to put everything um, to do something like this. It's, like... I forgot who it was. I think it was Travis Gafford, who's like a journalist. He made a video about the the odds of getting into esports, and um, believe it or not, it's it's the same odds to get into esports than it is to being like an NFL player, right, in the National Football League. So, you know, it's it's something that you have to consider. It's it's not. There's a lot of people who want to do what you do, you know, and you have to put everything um, into something like this. So, again, I I want to just reiterate this point too. It's like. I'm not special in any way. I just work, well, I try and work really, really hard. Um, and anyone can do this. So, yeah, I mean, like, esports right now, obviously not what it was a few years ago. It's uh, really, really volatile, I feel like. But, um, you know, I do see my future being in Valorant for the short term at least. Um, and uh, hopefully the long term if it, if it lasts that long. But I'm going to work as hard as I can to make, uh, you know, to do what I can with this opportunity. I mean, I've gotten a whole bunch of talented players to work with. And, you know, it's on me to make sure I guide them correctly and make them the best players they can be. And same for me, like, you know, be the best coach I can be. So, yeah, um, you know, it's really sad that I didn't really get to, like, update you guys. And, you know, I did want to talk about, too, like, the Overwatch League. I think that's important because um, I never really addressed, like, what my exit was like. And, you know, it was, it was a difficult time for me for sure, but... Um, Basically, my last team was, you know, with the Gladiators, and uh, they actually let me know that, you know, they weren't going to proceed with me um, pretty close to, like, the deadline. Uh, so I only had a few offers with teams that I didn't really believe in in the terms of, like, the rosters that they had. And, uh, I d again, I took that for granted, and then I just, like, decided not to, like, sign with them. And, um, again, you know, that was obviously arrogant of me as well, but, um, yeah, I, d I definitely think that, uh, the gladiators, that whole the the whole way it was like handled the situation was uh, very poor, um, you know in general. And you know that's another part of esports that people don't see. It's like, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who aren't qualified um, to do like a lot of the jobs you know that they're they're meant to do. And um, initially, like for example, I I don't think I was qualified. I learned on the job uh, in the LCS and in League of Legends, right? But um, yeah, uh, I, d I definitely think that in the Gladiators case, that was the case. I think uh, management um, wasn't the best to me. Uh, you know, I, I remember the I had a talk with the manager on like face call. And, you know, I got them the job too, like in the previous uh, year, and they were like, "Oh, we didn't want to pay you uh, a lower amount." And I was like, "Well, you didn't even ask me. Like, <laughs> maybe I would have taken that." Um, and then, like, uh, also just, like, the way it was handled, where, like, the timeline was was tough. I mean, this this was, again, one of the hardest points. And I, I didn't get signed for another four years after that. And it, f it felt like um, that I def definitely took, like, esports is definitely a reputation thing. And uh, I took a hit on that for, for the reputation. But, you know, um, it is what it is. And uh, I didn't give up. And, you know, I, I, I kept working to it. And, you know, no one should ever either. So... Yeah, that's kind of what happened with the Gladiators and why I left Overwatch. I never really even said that. And it's, I know it's been four years, so I'm not sure if, you know, a lot of the people who followed me back then uh, even care anymore. But, yeah, it was um, that's the reason I think that uh, upper management, uh, you know, be the uh, you know head coach and then uh, GM and stuff like that, didn't handle my situation too well. Um, but it is what it is. And, 
you know, got to go ahead and, and move forward from that. So, yeah, hopefully this was, you know, insightful. I wanted to make sure that you guys knew what it's like to be in esports and um, understand, like, what kind of sacrifices you have to make to actually make it. And, yeah, uh, hopefully I'm better at keeping you guys updated in terms of, like, when I'm making an another video, but... I appreciate y'all for watching. I appreciate y'all for, you know, keeping up with me over this these entire years. Um, for those of you, few of you who are still out there, but thank you. And if you ever need anything, just like let me know in the comments. Like it's always good talking to y'all. See y'all later, okay?